that in Murray Allen's book entitled Baseball's Top 100 Baseball Players of All Times, he was ranked 64th. And at that time, dubbed the best relief pitcher of all time. Here's a unique... I never really got hit real hard, and, and I think Maury based that, uh, you know, my ranking on, on that. Plus, you know, he had a chance to, to really see me play a lot because he was, he was there all the time. But uh, I was very, very flattered for that. I, I told him I wouldn't have cared if I was 100, you know, and I... I, I thought 64 was a little high, but uh, I'll take it. You know, <laughs> certainly. Well, I tell you, I I never went in and started an inning like a lot of these guys do now. You know, they get that save, they come in and start the ninth inning, they get three outs, and they're heroes. I mean, every time I went in a game, I had guys on base, and I I, I think you got to have a little bit of ice in your veins, I guess. I mean, I I was, I was never nervous. I always felt there was more pressure on the hitter than there was on me because. You know, I knew I was going to throw strikes, so it was entirely up to him to try and hit me. And I, I all, I've always felt, I still feel that way. But uh, you know, I, I think it's something that that you really got to want to do. I don't, I don't think you're going to be a good relief pitcher if you uh, take a guy that was a starter and say, okay, you're going to be in the bullpen now because he, he's just not going to like that. I mean, I absolutely loved it out there. I still do. And. And to me, that was I, I was almost like being a regular player because I was I was pitching almost every day, and uh, you know. But but you've got to have at least one or two good pitches that that you can get over and get people out on. I think that's one of the most important. The greatest thing that I ever saw was uh, Carly Stremski when he won the Triple Crown there in 1967. I mean, I have never seen any ball player play like that in my entire life since. And uh, you know, when people ask me who was the greatest player I ever saw, I mean. I don't even have to hesitate and uh, not taking anything away from all the other great players of those years but uh, when you see somebody uh, day in and day out and uh, play every single game just about and do the things that Carl Yastrzemski did at that time and and uh, just I mean the beauty of it was that you could go to that ballpark uh, not only having your own confidence but he instilled confidence because mm. you knew that, hey, if we can just get him in the right spot at the right time, that's going to give us a chance to win that game. And uh, you know, that was my rookie year. And I mean, I learned an awful lot from Carl Yastrzemski that year. And that helped me throughout my whole uh, major league career. You know, the, the thing about Yogi was that, uh, you know, he, he, he was such a, he's such a nice guy. And and you know exactly what he's saying all the time. It just doesn't come out right. I mean, the 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 one that I'll say on the air here is, uh, I guess that when they went to Cincinnati and uh, you know they were going on or it, it was getting dark off early there or something. And he, but he was in the outfield and he comes in and he says he turns to uh, Mickey or Elson or whoever it was and, and, and says boy it gets laid off early here <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knew exactly what he meant but the, but that that was that's what makes yeah. Yogi Yogi and uh, I mean you know I put hot stuff in my toothpaste and burn his mouth and because he used to use my toothpaste all the time so <laughs> so I stuck some uh, white heat in there and he come over after I went in the shower and put on his toothbrush and start brushing his teeth with with it and and he comes back to me and I and you know his gums are still on fire from this stuff and uh, to now this is what he did to really get me back he said okay that's it I'm never using your toothpaste again <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay <laughs> I, you know I had a number of pitching coaches uh, Sal Magley was my first pitching coach and and uh, <laughs> He got me fined. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I had struck Norm Cash out the first five times I ever faced a guy on, at the most, four pitches. And so they're coming back in uh, at the end, towards the end of the year there, and Sal Magley tells me, you know, he says, you can't throw that slider that Norm Cash all the time. He's going to hit that. He says, you've got to come up and in with the fastball every now and get him back off that plate. So, I mean, uh, you know, I, I end up facing him in that series, and, you know, and I was 21 years old, and I, I listened to everything that my coaches told me. And, you know, I was in a learning process, and uh, this was a lesson well learned that Sal Magley didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Because, <laughs> because I did 
try and come in with a fastball, well, that baby's still going. And, uh, and then Dick Williams wanted to know what, what I'm doing throwing him a fastball. So, and I didn't tell. I never told on Sal. I never told, said that he told me to do that, but Dick fined me another 100 bucks for throwing a fastball. He said, you've been getting this guy out with sliders. Why would you ever do something like that? So <laughs> I, I, I was finished doing my running, and I was in the clubhouse. I was really feeling good about the game that I had, and, and, I, and Ted Williams had a very, very loud voice and all of a sudden I hear in the clubhouse uh, where's that left hander to pitch today and, and I knew who it was hollering and I thought oh man I, I saw right right here right here and you know I thought he's gonna come over and congratulate me for a good game and he says so oh, you thought you did real good today and I says yeah he says I knew every time you were gonna throw that cur I used to throw a curveball with my thumb up in the air <laughs> and uh, he says I could see that thumb sticking out of your glove every time you threw that he says you'll never go he says you know what the best pitch in baseball is and I says, yes, I do. And he says, what's that? And I says, change up. And he says, wrong. <laughs> and he says, uh, no, he says, it's a slider. He says, because that's the only pitch that I couldn't hit when I knew it was coming. I said, yes, sir. And he's, so what he did was he told me how the slider broke. He didn't really tell me how to throw it or anything like that, but he told me what it did. And uh, so I used to uh, lay in bed at night with the lights out with a baseball in my hand trying to figure out how to throw this pitch to make it go like he said. And uh, I was living in a renovated garage at the time and, and I was uh, right next door to a bar with a big parking lot and a street light and after about two weeks I, I it just came to me in the dark and I get up and I get dressed and I go out and the only street light there was was in this parking lot so I'm throwing this ball against the side of my little <laughs> garage there. <laughs> And people are wondering what the devil I'm doing out there. But, I, I mean, I got that thing that night. And uh, and Ted always told me, you get that slider, he says, you'll go to the big leagues. Man, yeah. it, it was it was absolutely tremendous. I mean, first time I threw it, I mean, it, it, it looked like the guy missed this thing by three feet. <laughs> I mean, it was just unbelievable. Um, and, I mean, plus the fact I, I didn't hang it very often. You know, with a curveball, uh, I didn't hang a lot of curveballs, but it was very difficult to – keep down when you're younger and and it was difficult to have enough confidence in it to throw it three and oh I mean and and I mean the very next day I went to that ballpark and I was warming up to win the game and Bob Montgomery was the catcher and I said slider he says you don't have a slider I says today I, yesterday I did <laughs> but today I do and I mean I my strikeouts went way up and uh and I, I would throw this thing on, uh, on three and oh and uh, after a while I just I discarded my fastball, my curveball, everything. I just threw this mm. pitch every single pitch. And I did that in the big leagues for 17 years. Oh, it's just I got the big leagues. I just, I mean, there's a story where uh, we got Elston Howard uh, when I was with Boston. And the first game he caught me, I come in the game, and the first sign he gives me is a fastball, and I shook him off. And I only mm -hmm. had about three weeks in the big leagues. And Dick Williams fined me 50 bucks. For, <laughs> He says, this guy's got 20 years in the big leagues. you got two weeks, and you shake him off. <laughs> and I said, well, I says, I didn't want to throw that pitch. And I, I explained to him, and, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. You know, he just, uh, he, he said, whatever Elson uh, calls you, you throw. And so then Elson came to me after he was done uh, chewing me out, and he says, hey, from now on, if I put something down that, that you don't want to throw, just stand there for a second now put put another sign down and I said well I'll make that easy on you you just put three down all the time and we won't have any problems <laughs> <laughs> five to three New York leading bottom of the ninth bouncing ball Nettles goes to Randolph one over to first in time double play the ball game is over the Yankees win the American League as Sparky Lyle closed out the 1977 American League pennant. We also close out our interview with Sparky Lyle.